Now, let us look at the female reproductive system in humans. The female reproductive system, it consists of a pair of ovaries. So, these are a pair of ovaries which play an important role in the process of reproduction in females. Ovaries, they produce the female gametes. So, now before uh, discussing about the functioning of the ovaries, let us see what are the other parts are there in female reproductive system. So, the female reproductive system is located in the lower abdomen that is inside the body. Ovaries are also located inside the body of female. In case of males, the testes are located outside the body in a pocket like structure called scrotum, scrotal sac. In case of females, ovaries are located inside the body in, in their lower abdomen. So, this muscular bag like part called as uterus, we call this as uterus. And it is having two side tube like structures called as fallopian tubules. Fallopian tubules, and here they have ovaries. So the fallopian tubules they end with a funnel shaped ending. And here it is connected to the ovary. So the ovary, it releases the female gametes. Those are the ova. So the ovaries, if you look at the inner structure of the ovary, inside the ovary, there are small bubble-like structures which are floating in some fluid. These are ova. So there are really small bubble-like structures which are not matured ova. So, these ova or these egg cells are formed by the cell division called as a meiosis. By the method of meiosis, meiotic cell division, these ova are formed when these ova or the female gametes are matured, when they are completely grown. So, they are growing in some bubble like structures called as follicles, which are called as graphene follicles. So, these are the graphene follicles. The graphene follicle, it consists of the ova. Now, when it is mature, the graphene follicle, it ruptures and it releases the ova out. It releases the ova out. So, here the ova which is released out of the ovary, it is collected into this funnel like structure. It enters into the fallopian tubule. The ova passes into the oviduct that is the fallopian tubule. So, inside the fallopian tubule, the process of fertilization takes place. So, here the male gamete fuses with the female gamete and there the reproduction, there the fertilization takes place. So, the release of the ova or the egg cells is called as ovulation. Ovulation. So, the ovulation, it takes place in a cycle of 28 days which we call it as menstrual cycle. Only once in this 28 days of period, only one egg cell is released either by the left ovary or by the right ovary. So, alternately. So, one month the left, the next month the other ovary. Either by these ovaries, one egg cell is released in a period of 28 days that is the menstrual cycle period. So, this egg cell after releasing it is collected into this funnel shaped a fallopian tubule and it enters into this fallopian tubule where the fertilization takes place. So, after fertilization, this one it becomes to zygote and it turns to embryo, it enters and it implants in the uterus. So, how the conditions are there inside the uterus? The uterus wall is lined with blood vessels. So, when there is fertilization, if fertilization takes place, if the male gamete fuses with the female gamete in the fallopian tubule. So, when the fertilization takes place, then the uterus becomes thick walled. The walls become more thick. It gets more blood supply. It becomes more richly supplied with blood vessels. And it provides all the suitable conditions for the implantation of the embryo. So, the embryo, it comes and it implants, it occupies the space where it grows into an egg baby. So, for the growth of an egg baby, that is to supply the food, that is to 
remove the waste from the young baby so everything is prepared here inside this uterus so all such changes are brought up by the chemical uh, hormones so the uterus it provides all the necessary conditions for the growth of the embryo so before uh, uh, see if no fertilization takes place if there is no fertilization what happens to this here what kind of changes takes place we are going to see that later now let us see what happens what kind of changes takes place to the embryo after implantation in the uterus and what are the various stages in the growth of a young baby inside the uterus now let us understand the development of the human embryo so once the fertilization takes place the zygote it divides cell division takes place and it gets sufficient number of cells and these cells they differentiate into different parts and different layers so what kind of structures are formed here once the implantation takes place in the uterus so in the wall of the uterus if the embryo gets implanted slowly that embryo it sinks into the tissues of the uterus so it merges with that so here it forms an outer layer called as chorion so this protective layers or membranes protective membranes or developed from the cells of the embryo few cells of the embryo they develop these protective membranes like chorion so they nourish and give protection to the embryo so as the development takes place few finger like structures from these membranes called chorion few finger like structures they establish connection with the tissues of the uterus so they form some kind of connections the projections the villi of this chorion they form the connections finger like structures these finger like structures they form the connection with the uterus so there it forms some kind of a tissue called as placenta so they have small pools of blood moving in them but the blood of the embryo and the blood of the mother is not directly mixed together they are separated by certain membranes so there is no direct mixing of the blood so this formation of the placenta it takes place at a period of 12 weeks of pregnancy 12 weeks of pregnancy so at this time the finger like structures from the chorion they joined up with the tissues of that the uterus it forms the placenta which plays a very important role in the development of the embryo it is providing the nourishment at the same time protection so along with this uh, chorion we find another protective covering around the embryo here we can see this another protective covering called as amnion amnion so this is formed around the embryo and the cavity inside this embryo and the amnion is filled with amniotic fluid amniotic fluid so this amniotic fluid which gives support and protection from the mechanical injuries or shocks so the embryo is protected from the mechanical injury by this fluid the embryo is floating in this fluid called as amniotic fluid so we learned the importance of the membrane chorion and uh, amnion there is one more membrane which is connected to the digestive system of the embryo digestive system of the embryo to the outer layers that is called as allantois so this allantois membrane it forms the umbilical cord umbilical cord is very important which makes the connection with the placenta it helps in the transfer of materials to the baby so the umbilical cord is formed by this allantois so these are the various membranes helping the embryo to grow in the uterus so the embryo it grows into a fetus at an age of 3 months 3 months of pregnancy we call the embryo as fetus it's no more an embryo it is called as fetus it develops in the mother's womb in the uterus so it takes nearly 280 days or 9 months of time 
nine months period. So this period is called as gestation period, and after that the birth takes place. So this is how an embryo it develops into fetus and to an egg baby inside the uterus. So now the birth of the child. Once the fetus is developed, completely grown into egg baby. So completing the gestation period that is that two eighty days or nine months after completing this period, the delivery or the birth of the child takes place. So naturally, while the birth of that, when the birth of the child takes place, the position of the baby, it will be like head facing downwards. So if this is the baby inside the womb of the mother so here is the baby the position of the baby is the head is downwards so the first the head it comes out of the reproductive system of the female so the out outer entry for the baby is the vagina so the baby moves towards the vagina and comes out into the world sometimes the baby the feet of the baby may come first if it's so in such cases the delivery becomes complicated so naturally a normal method is a comfortable method is that the head of the baby comes first then it will be a an easy delivery or easy birth of the baby so when the baby is completely grown that birth is initiated by the contractions in the uterine muscles uterine muscles rhythmically they contract and relax so this is initiated or triggered by some hormone but the triggering mechanism when the delivery takes place and that, that mechanism is not completely yet known the hormonal influence makes these muscles to contract and relax rhythmically so these contractions makes the baby to move towards the vagina a vagina and to uh, push out so when there is a contraction and relaxation uh, the layer that is covering around the baby that is the amnion this amnion it ruptures and you know what is filled inside the amnion amniotic fluid is filled inside the amnion so the fluid it flows out so it is a good sign and it will initiate further more pushing of the baby out so along with the amniotic fluid and other tissues flushes out and the baby is pushed out once the baby is pushed out of the uterus through the vagina out the baby is still connected to umbilical cord umbilical cord which made a connection to the baby and the mother that is at the placenta which helped for the exchange of materials and all so that umbilical cord will be cut by the doctor and he will tie it so uh, after few days the baby will lose whatever the small part that is hanging from his navel position the small bit of umbilical cord will dry up and it will degenerate so that it forms a mark called as navel on our body so that it indicates the place where we are connected to our mother inside the womb so that is the umbilical cord so once the delivery has taken place the uterine wall still it contracts to push all the other tissues that are formed because of the pregnancy so there is no more use with those tissues because the delivery is done baby is born so all those tissues and all those fluids are flushed out so at the last phase of the pregnancy after everything is pushed out a substance called as colostrum is formed in the mammary glands of the mother mammary glands they produce milk as the baby is born the baby is to be fed by the milk so here this colostrum substance is formed in the mammary glands which is very very important so there is a wrong notation or wrong belief that soon after the baby is born that the colostrum which is formed it is not given to the babies in olden days they felt it is not good for the babies 